Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Destiny Kids. Story time with me, Miss Patsy. I know you're wondering, what is Miss Patsy doing with a hula hoop? Is she gonna be hulaing throughout today's lesson? No, of course not. As the hula hoop, as you can see, it's a circle just like any and every other circle. It goes around and around and around. It doesn't have a start or an ending. It just keeps going and going. Well, boys and girls, that's the same for our story today. We're gonna be talking about creation, talking about God. God has always been, always will be throughout all eternity. So, to prepare for today's lesson, boys and girls, there are some things I need for you to go and to do. First, go and get your Bible. Then, go maybe look through your school supplies and gather crayons, colored pencils, pens, anything that you could do to do artwork with. Also, you should have received a special envelope. So at this time, would you please go ask maybe your big sister, your big brother, dad, mom. Oh, wait, maybe not mom, because today is Mother's Day. And if mom is still in bed sleeping, we're gonna let her rest and relax as we maybe talk about doing special things for mom to show our appreciation of all the hard work she does for us, and she will have a day off. So right now, boys and girls, please, Miss Patsy is going to do her finalizations of hula hooping, go gather her things, and you go do the same. You need your Bible, crayons, colored pencils, markers, and also the special envelope that was addressed to you to prepare for today's lesson. See you soon. Okay, boys and girls, are we back? We have our Bible, crayons, and our envelope, special envelope that is addressed to you. Now, inside your envelope, let's please open it and see what's on the inside. Ah, on the inside of our lessons, we have coloring sheets. It's titled, The Bible is God Big Storybook. Then we have a page here with, oh, about seven squares. I wonder what is that about? Then we have a page here with six different things that is happening. Well, let's see what it is that we are going to learn today. How many of you like reading books? I have a favorite story, whether it be a fairy tale, facts, or um, drama. Well, all of those stories like Jonah, uh, the Little Red Hen. Not sure if you all know about that book. That's a story that Miss Patsy grew up with as a child. Frozen 2, I'm quite sure we all know about Frozen 2, or maybe Jack and the Beanstalk, uh, Green Eggs and Ham, or even maybe a true story like Harriet Tubman that gives the story of her life, her history, and the things that she went through. Also, all books have a title as well as an author. Like the author of this book is M.W. Taylor. Well, boys and girls, God's storybook, the big storybook, the Bible, is God's storybook. It is a book with many authors, many stories, letters, poems, even lyrics to songs. It's all comprised in this one book. But one thing about God's big book, it, it is a book of truth. Yes, it has many authors, but all of those authors were inspired by God. And so everything that they wrote, authors like, oh, Moses, David, Paul, and many others. Some we don't even know their name, but God inspired them to write his story from Genesis to Revelations. God's book, the holy book, the Bible, consists of many, many other books. 
How many of you know how many books are in the Bible? That's right. There are 66 books in the Bible. Now, in the Bible, it's broken up into two parts. Can anybody tell me what are the two parts called in the Bible? Yes, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, let's see. This may be a tough one. Who knows how many books are in each part? How many books are in the Old Testament? That's right, 39. And how many are in the New? 27. Very good, boys and girls. This book is God's storybook comprised of everything. So we're going to learn and open our book for our Bible story today to the New Testament in the book of John. If you don't know where that is, of course, you can open your book in the table of contents and find where it is located. John is in the New Testament. John is one of the four Gospels. In the New Testament, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So let's please go to the New Testament, and we're going to find John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And then we're going to skip down, and Miss Patsy is going to read chapter 14. So boys and girls, please follow along as I read aloud. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, skipping down to 14. And it reads as follows. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All the things were made through him, and without him was anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness had overcome it. Now let's skip down to 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the Father full of grace and truth. So boys and girls, what do we know about God's big story book? That's right, that it was in the beginning. What is this whole book about and how do we all fit in it? Well, this story book tells us about God creating man, man rebelling and sinning against God and how God redeemed us back to himself through Jesus and his death on the cross. So we know in the beginning that was the word. So that brings us to our first coloring sheet, that the Bible is God's big storybook. So with your crayons, boys and girls, after today's lesson, take the time and to color your coloring sheet. But now, at this time, on this page, what I want you to do is think about your favorite movie or your favorite book. And you're going to write or draw out clues of scenes that's in the movie or parts that's in your book. And then you're going to see if your brother or your sister or even if your mom and dad can guess where that movie is from or what your favorite book. Miss Patsy is also going to do the same, and I'm going to see if you're going to be able to guess where Miss Patsy got her little illustrations from. So get out your crayons, your colored pencils, and let's go to work. Okay, boys and girls, I know it's probably going to take you a little bit more time, but here, let's take a look. Look to see at the hints that Miss Patsy drew and colored and tried to illustrate for you to see if you can come up with the name of her book. Um, that's a good guess, but not quite. We're here. 
Miss Patsy's illustration came from Dr. Seuss ABC book. So my hint, A for apple, F is for fish, U for umbrella. So I did an illustration to maybe help you to think about what was Miss Patsy's favorite book. Well, Dr. Seuss, it's a fun character, but it is not true. It is not real. Not like God's big book, his holy word. So we know that in the Bible, everything that is said was inspired by God and it is true. Now, boys and girls, you're probably wondering, what is this last page about? What does it have to do with God and his big book and us all being here? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if you would, please get your Bibles and we're going to go to the beginning, the very first book of the Bible, which is Genesis. And we're going to read the story about creation, how it all began. So please turn to the front of your Bibles, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 25. And then we're going to skip to Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. So please follow along as I read out loud. And it's kind of long, so prepare yourself, boys and girls. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. The darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. He called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expansion in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expansions and separated the waters that were under the expansion from the waters that were above the expansion. And it was so. And God called the expansions heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called sea. And God said that it was good. And God said, let the earth spurt vegetations, plants yielding seeds and fruit, trees bearing fruits in their own seed, and according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation and plants yielding seeds according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seeds, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be light, and the expansions of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for the signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expansions of heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the great light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expansion of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. God said that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swim with swims of living creatures that like birds fly above the earth across the expansions of the heaven. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with it, which the waters swam according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was the evening and there was the morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind 
livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kind and the livestock according to their kind and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on it. So God created man in his image. In his image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. That was Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 27. Now moving to um, chapter 2, verses 1 and 1 through 2. Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested. And on the seventh day, from all his work that he had done. Whoo! Ah! Oh. Okay, boys and girls, that was a lot, right? I know, but I thank you for listening and paying attention. But at this time, let's see if we can remember and kind of act out what we heard about God creation in six days and then what happened on the seventh day. So if you would, please. Okay, boys and girls. What did God create on the first day? That is correct. He created light and darkness and the heavens and the earth. So how can we remember that? How many of us know the little game, Pickaboo? Okay, so we open up, this is light, we can see, but then if we cover our eyes, that is darkness, we cannot see. So on the first day, God created light and he created darkness. He created the heavens and the earth. Again, he created the light, the darkness, he created the heaven and the earth. That was the first day. On the second day, God made the waters and he made the sky. So on day two, God made the waters and he made the sky. That was the second day. On the third day, God made the land and the plant. On the third day, God made the land and he made the plants. On the fourth day, God made the stars like shooting stars. He made the sun and the moon. So on the fourth day, he made the stars, the sun and the moon. On the fifth day, God made the birds. He made the fish to swim in the sea. And guess what, boys and girls? What did God make on the sixth day? You got it. On the sixth day, you can say he made you and he made me. On the sixth day, God created man in his own image. Their names were Adam and Eve. All of mankind came from those two people, Adam and Eve, male and female, God created them. And what did God do on the seventh day? <sighs> he rested. All of his work and his creation was done, complete and finished. And it was good. So God rested. Now, boys and girls, don't get it wrong. Does God need to rest? Does God ever sleep? Well, of course not. He never sleeps. So why did God rest? Maybe it was because to show us or to give us an example that after we work really, really hard, Monday through Friday, going to school, 
even Saturdays, cleaning up and doing our chores, Sunday or one day out of the week at least, we need to rest. So God gave us his model. So what does all of this have to do? We have God's, his big storybook. He also created man. And we thank God for doing all of that. So right now, we are going to race, which is our time of prayer. We're going to raise him up. We're going to admit our sins, count our blessings, and express our needs. So if you would, please bow with me for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for you being God, you being the creator of the whole world, that you made the moon, the sun, the stars, the birds, the fish, and all the animals. And thank you for even creating us in your image. For that, we thank you. We thank you that even as we read in your storybook that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross, that when we sinned against you, we can confess our sins and you will forgive us of our sins and accept us and put us back in right standing with you. We just thank you and we count all of our blessings that we have food, clothing and shelter, that we have parents who love us, who uh, provide for us. We just give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And Lord, we just ask that you would just go with the moms, the grandmoms, the aunties, even the big sisters, as we make observation of Mother's Day this day, to let them know that they are loved and that they are appreciated. We thank you. We love you. It is in your name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Okay, boys and girls. Now it's time to please go and ask, let's say your big sister or your uncle or your auntie. Remember, we're going to let mom rest today because Miss Patsy have a very special message for the adults. Hello, parents. Just want to come on to let you know that you can please go to www.discoverdestiny.org to find out more questions that you can ask your students today to reinforce today's lesson. Thank you for joining us and have a blessed week.